I will do it with a baritone. Who knows? Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Dulce America video podcast, also known as Simply Dulce America. My name is Bing Futch. It's the first show of 2017, and I thank you very, very much for joining me. I have got a lot of fun stuff for you this year, and I've got lots of big ideas, and I'm shooting a whole bunch of those right now. But the first thing you're probably wondering is, is that real? Yes. It's going to change over the next couple of episodes because I'm just getting bored with my face, I suppose. Anyway, before I go any further, I want to give a huge, huge shout out to one of my patrons, Mr. John Timlin. Uh, John has been an amazing support and friend over the past few years with Patreon. And for those of you wondering what Patreon is, it's a way of um, helping out artists who are trying to make art full time, whether it be music or dance or filmmaking or even comic books. There's a whole big community out there of uh, people who are doing this art and they've got lots of people who are supporting them. Sometimes as little as five dollars a month will get you all kinds of backstage privileges and special things exclusive to patrons only. So John has been amazing. I want to thank John Timlin very much. And if you'd like to find out more about Patreon, you can go right here and click on this link and it'll take you down to patreon.com slash bingfutch where you can find out more about my campaign and where the funds collected monthly go to. Lots of stuff in the studio, our lighting rig, our chroma key backdrop, all of that made possible by patrons. So thanks again, John Timlin. And now, how am I going to kick off the new year? I think I would like to take a little look at how we practice and how we spend our time with the mountain dulcimer. Now, a lot of people, when they get their instruments, and I know a lot of you out there probably got brand new mountain dulcimers for Christmas. Maybe you just started playing, but you're not exactly sure how to proceed with your journey. A lot of people will just start messing around on it. Other people will jump right in there and they'll start learning a new tune. But I have come up with a basic three-part uh, approach to working on your time with the mountain dulcimer. And this can be broken down into thirds no matter how long your practice time is, whether it be five minutes or five hours. And I don't know many people out there who practice five hours a day, but there are a few of them and I know you're out there. So let's divide these up into three basic sections and you can do them in order or out of order, but I really like this order because it really helps you have a good time and a lot of satisfaction as well as challenge when you're working with the instrument. Number one, definitely warm up and do exercises before you start working on anything else. That's going to get the fingers limber, it's going to get the blood pumping and flowing, and it's going to get you uh, calibrated with the fretboard. Some exercises that I like to do are just running basic scales across the strings. So, you know, your D major scale, this is a baritone, so this would be actually an A major scale. And just running scales up and down the fretboard, anything to get those fingers moving and in contact with the strings and the fretboard down here. You can do hammer-on pull-off exercises. Whatever it is that's going to get coordination between the left hand and the right hand is really, really good stuff. So just make the first third of your rehearsal time a warm-up and practice exercises. Fundamental stuff that'll give you a nice footing, firm grounding for the second part of the rehearsal and practice time. The second part of the rehearsal and practice time will be working on a tune. Now I know a lot of us like to work on many tunes at once and I'm guilty of doing that too. But you know, multitasking when it comes to learning a piece of music really is sort of a myth. The more you spend time with just one piece of music, learn it backwards, forwards, commit it to memory and be able to play through it, you'll be able to play that one tune better than if you worked on four or five different tunes and worked a little at each one, like you're going from pile to pile. Just work on one song and focus on that. The reason I don't like to have people work on a rehearsal um, you know, with one song or one piece and that's it, is that that's usually a very, very challenging thing. And when you get into very challenging things, oftentimes you're going to run into roadblocks and difficulties. And it's very difficult to leave your practice time feeling like you've accomplished something unless you really stick it and nail what's happening with that piece of music. So we're going to find other ways to give satisfaction leading off with your practice for one. And then you go into and you work on your material and hopefully you'll come out of that with some satisfaction as well. Which leads us now to number three. Number three as part of your session should be no agenda whatsoever, just noodle. 
Just have fun, like when you first got the mountain dulcimer, and maybe you're doing that right now. You're just putting your hands all over the instrument and just strumming and seeing what happens. Wandering. Put your fingers into different chord shapes. Try chord shapes that you don't ever think you've seen, but might still sound cool. It's when you start wandering through the environment on the uh, mountain dulcimer that you find all kinds of neat stuff. Serendipity takes hold, and before you know it, you're discovering lots of really, really cool stuff. So let's rehash that right now. Take your practice time, your alone time with the mountain dulcimer, and break it up into three distinctly different sections. Start off with warm-ups and exercises. Get those fingers moving, get the blood pumping, and get everything all loosened up so you can really get down to the nitty gritty. Second, work on a piece of music and work on it hardcore. Try not to dilute your time with other pieces of music and other things. Just focus on that one piece until you feel like you've really got it under your fingers and then move on to your next one. Right now I'm working on James Horner's theme from the motion picture Titanic and it's coming along kind of nice. I usually use this time to sort of try different approaches to melody, to chord movement, to voicings and arrangements, and just muck around with something before I even try to tab it out or commit it down onto paper of any sort. So the second part of your rehearsal time, work through a piece of music and get better at it. And then finally, number three. Number three is just noodle. Lose your noodle and just have fun with the mountain dulcimer. Don't have any sort of agenda and you can end this practice time, just kind of having fun and seeing what comes out of it. Break it down into thirds, whether it being a short rehearsal or a long rehearsal, and in time you're going to find that you're going to have a lot more fun and dread a lot less hanging out and pushing yourself to be an even better player. Well, that is it for this episode. I've got some more stuff coming up uh, very, very soon. I'm going to shoot a lot of episodes tonight, and uh, throughout that time, I'm going to shave in different places. That sounded really bad. Until next time, my friends, this is Bing Futch. Keep on playing.